Hello, in this video I'm going to go over start to finish how to do a 10 stitch blanket. Uh, what you will need for this is I am using for the one back here, it's actually the half inch 19 peg uh, Afghan square loom. Uh, what I will be showing you on will be the 5 8 inch uh, 15 peg Afghan square loom. Of course, you can get both of those from premiumknittinglooms.com. You'll need your loom hook, a crochet hook, and scissors. Good thing is there is no row counting. Um, it's once you get past your first corner, like once you get past like this first square right here, it's very easy to just keep going and to keep up with. Now the yarn I'm going to use for this one. It's a size 5 uh, bulky weight yarn, which if you are doing the 5 8 inch uh, loom, I suggest using a bulky weight yarn. Now I've just got a worsted weight that I'm using for the half inch one. Now there is, if you have um, followed my, seen my previous videos for this for the 10 stitch blanket done on, this is just an adjuster piece for an um, all in one. There are some changes I am doing, which I'll hold these, I'll put this one out right by this one so you can see. This one right here, if you go by this pattern, it's very smooth. This one, it's actually the texture is, the ridge is a lot uh, more pronounced and the texture, so it's a lot more textured. So I honestly, I like this way a lot better and it's a really, really simple difference that I do, which I'll get to that when it's to that point. Now to do this, okay. you only use 10 pegs of loom. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. So we're only using 10 pegs on this loom. So to do our cast on, wait, I gotta make sure I got 10 here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. To do our cast on, we're just doing a regular E wrap cast on, nothing special. So you wrap 10 pegs. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Push those down. Now we're going to go back and you wrap all those pegs again. There we go. This is our cast on and from here all we do is we just take the bottom loop over the top which that first one of course you got you have to pull that tight again. And this pattern, the pattern I use is not exact to the original pattern which was done by Frankie Brown in which uh, she uses a different stitch combination to create the look. I use the garter stitch with the e-wrap and the purl stitched. Um, I just simply, for me it seems like it works up faster and I like it's not as thick. It's airier. Um, so either way is perfectly fine to use. This is just the pattern that I personally like. Okay, so we got our first row is E-wrapped. Second row, we are going to purl all the way down. And you are going to do this back and forth, a uh, garter stitch, E-wrap one row, purl the next, until you have your beginning square is as big as you want, which that right there will, um, that will really dictate the whole size, the whole shape of the blanket itself, which I'll do this row and I will show you. Okay, so we got our E-wrap one row, purl the second, but, so I'll show you on this one I'm working on. All right. Right here, this little like rectangle right here, this was my initial 10 stitches that this was the initial piece I done. 
from there I you'll do your corner one corner two corner one corner two then you'll keep going and it just builds out from there so if you want your blanket to be more um, of a rectangle shape do a long rectangle and do it a little let me zoom out here so you can really see okay so this right here gives you an idea of the the shape my final shape of the blanket it's just going to be a lot larger of course and that was all done from this rectangle in the middle so that'll give you an idea of how long you make it now at this point just make your garter stitch piece as long as you want and then we'll right. go from there since this is just to show you how to do it. I'm not doing a very big like little rectangle I mean my other one I did was probably three times this long but all right now here is where the difference comes from the one you can see here and this one if you want your smooth where the bubbles aren't really sticking up you're going to do this part opposite of what I'm getting ready to show you and what I mean by that is we're getting ready to do we're going to start on our corner and this is corner part one so let me stretch this one out and give you a bit of a visual wrong side okay so we've got this part and now we're going to do our corner which the corner is just two different parts there is this triangle and then there is this triangle so you just need to do your corner part one and then your corner part two that's what we're getting ready to do and all it is is increasing and decreasing rows which see how this side is and see how this side is if you've got your stitches reversed you want to be doing it towards the side with the loops like this if you want your ridges bubbled up if you want your ridges flat then you're going to be going toward this side we're going to do it bubbled up so we're going to go towards this side so what we're going to do is we're going to take our out we're going to e-wrap oops e-wrap all the way down to the peg before our last peg at this point we're going to take the yarn off of that last peg and put our working yarn behind it and put that loop back on and take all those bottom over the top Move down just a little bit. Okay, now we're going to see that yarn. It's underneath this loop and it's in front. We're going to purl all the way to that last one. Which, of course, if you are not, um, if you've never purled before, there is a link in the description below. In the description below there is a link that will show you a video uh, that will teach you how to do the purl stitch. Um, I'm really not getting into the stitches. The main thing is I'm going to show you is just the construction of the blanket itself. Okay, so we purled all the way to the last. Now you're going to push all these pegs down. Now this last peg already has two loops on it. We're going to e-wrap to peg eight. Okay, so peg nine, we're going to take the yarn off and put the yarn on behind it and put that back on. You're going to take the bottoms over the tops and you're going to purl from this one all the way back. Okay. 
See, and then we're pulling that just right in front. We are purling. Now this pattern right here that I'm doing, you're going to keep this up until you're at the very last peg. Uh, so what I mean by that is, let me get to the end of this. At your next row, you're going to e-wrap again, but this time you will e-wrap to one, two, three, four, five, to peg six. You'll put the yarn in behind. Oh wait, no, that one's a single one. Sorry. You're going to e-wrap to peg seven. These last two have already um, got the working yarn underneath, and then of course, peg eight, you're going to take off pull the yarn just like we did with these last two and then you're on purl back to peg one and we're going to go back up one peg further and you're going to do this back and forth until you have every single peg done. Once you're down to your first peg, your first peg will only have one loop on it and the rest of these you'll see we'll have two. You're just going to push all those down and those the two pegs on each loop on each um, two loops on each peg sorry you're going to treat those as one. So this right here, what you just done was your corner part one, which as where the collar is changing, you can really see this is where it started, how it's forming. So that is your corner part one. You just did like this little triangle right here. Now we're going to do our corner part two, which is increasing rows instead of decreasing rows. So you're going to e-wrap your second one and you're going to go back and purl. Each time you're going to go up one more so you're going to e-wrap and e-wrap. You're going to do this until you get all the way to the end. I'll show you with one more. You just e-wrap up one more to the first peg you come to that has two on it. And like I said, you just do that until Once you're at you your last completed your corner part two and then purled all the way back to peg one to where every single peg only has one loop on it. This is what you're going to see. You're going to start, you'll see a line here where your corner, corner one and your corner two were done. And it's going to look very odd. I usually about this point have a lot of people like sending me pictures and ask me questions. You know, is this, is this right? Does this look right to you? Um really don't worry if you're following the directions don't worry about it until you get past like your first whole square like going all the way around this part one time and if it doesn't look right then then send me pictures and questions uh, but at this point now this is the only time through this entire pattern we're going to do this but we did our corner one and our corner two now if we just went and started doing the next part it would misshape what we need to do is let me zoom this out for a minute okay so you did your corner one corner two so you're right here so essentially you just got you made your rectangle even longer you have to do another corner one and corner two so that it will turn it to where you can start going down this way and you will do them exactly the same as you just did it's just you're going to decrease down to one peg and then you're going to increase all the pegs back up so you'll e wrap you don't do any extra rows or anything in between so see we're starting our decrease will decrease back and then you will after decrease you'll increase them all back up and that will create your corner one and corner two again all right so here's where we're at this is our initial rectangle however long you do this part you got corner one corner two then you repeated your corner one again and your corner two. So it's going to look kind of weird right now. It's a little hard to understand what's going on. But this is what it's supposed to look like. So you want to push all those down. Now this is the part where we're going to have to start 
going back down so we got this we've done this we've done that 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 and that so you've got kind of this it's going to look a little different on your loom of course but now we need to go down this way and we have to connect this original square or rectangle as we go and how we do that is you take I use that last loop for this first one I'll show you again what I just did see how all these loops are Not for this first one I just picked up that loop now we are going to e-wrap get my yarn e-wrap all the way down to peg 10 and then you treat all of that as one and take all of that over and you're going to purl back up to your peg one. Which I'll purl a couple here real quick. Just to show you how you connect. Because that's all you're going to do is to connect those sides. Is just pick those stitches up. Which you can see. Let me zoom in some. Okay, you see like the little V's? you get your next one and I'm actually picking both of those up so there's actually gonna be like three loops on there all right I'll finish purling so we purl all the way down to our, our first peg here We're going to e wrap back down to peg 10 and you're going to pick up those extra stitches again you're going to take all those over and do the same with the rest and that's how you connect your sides you keep doing this until you get to your like last V right here which with this being variegated collars it actually makes it a little easier for you to see what you're doing so um, if it's your first time doing a 10 stitch blanket and you're not sure what to do or what colors to use if you use a collar that will slowly uh, change, like you can see this one, this one was one that changed. Actually, all of mine have different collars in them. But something like this, it makes it a lot easier for you to see what you're doing. You can see like the purple strand, like this was our last one we picked up, so the next time we'll pick that one, then we'll pick that one, then we'll pick that one. We're going to go all the way down until we get to this very last right, V. Once you get down to the end of that first piece you just do your corner one and your corner two again just like you did up here corner one and corner two you just don't repeat it you just do it once but this is kind of what it's going to look like you can start to see it holding its shape if yours isn't this like exact don't worry I'm using a pretty thick yarn and it's um uh, it's just holding its shape really good. Now you can flip it over and you can see where where you had joined those. It's starting to bubble up, which is exactly what you want. Now we're actually going to do the same thing we just did with this side, but we're connecting this side. The only thing is we have different loops that we connect, which there's 10 stitches, so there's gonna be 10 loops. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm missing, oh, nine, and there's an extra one on the end. Right there 10 um, you want to be careful if you grab that very first loop you got to watch because that's what your string is coming from 
But what I like to do is I'm gonna grab this last loop right here, use that one as my first one. And then you're going to do the same. You're going to e-wrap down. I mean, yeah, e-wrap down and purl up. And then you'll pick up another one. And you're just you're picking up these loops up at the top. You can you're picking all of those up. And then you'll be doing ten. There'll be ten that you pick up for this one. Then you're going to do your corner again. And then I'll show you which one what you pick up on the other side. Once you're at the end of that side, um, I wanted to take a moment and stop and show you something. When you're done with your corner part one, before you start your corner part two, if you take just a stitch marker and put it on the string and leave that right there and then go about doing your next corner, that will mark out the exact turning point of your corner as you go. So as you go around, uh, with a collar like this, it's not going to be as hard to tell what your turning peg is so much. But when you're using something like this, there's a bit of a clump. It's hard to tell if it's like right here, right here, right here. I mean, there's like two or three different stitches that it really could be. And if you don't get them right exact, um, it's not a big deal. Uh, the only time it really makes a difference is if you're changing collars and doing like a whole round of a separate collar. So that's it. You just put that on there and then you just go about doing your corner part two and completely ignoring that that's there. Okay, so we've got that corner one and two, which if you add the hook as I told you to, let me zoom this in, it is in between, right there is what you would pick up as that corner one, right before you do your corner one and two. Okay, so I'll just show you real quick kind of what you're looking at right now. It's going to look like this. If you flip it over, this will be the side, the, at the top of it when it's done. This, of course, you will weave in. But you can see how um, pronounced the ridge is at this point. Okay, so we turn that corner. We're going to pick up that same, that last loop from that previous, right before we did the corner. But then, of course, you're going to e-wrap down. I'll do a set real quick, and then I'll show you what you pick up after this point. All right. I believe the video, the initial video I'd seen to do this, actually had you picking up these loops right here that are up. I actually found that if I pick up this loop in between those, that it's a lot more uh, pronounced, the ridges. So you're going to go down. Okay, so there's that first loop. So we're going to pick up the space in between that first loop. And that is what it looks like. And you're going to do that all the way until you get to your end piece which your last stitch would be this one right here. You're going to do that all the way to the end. And after that, the corners are the same. The sides are the same. As you can see, at this point, all of your sides have that same stitch on the outside edge, which is what you're going to be doing. Okay, out. so at this point, once you get down to that side, you've completed one complete round. Let's flip this over and you can get an idea. Of course, this right here is not going to be bubbled up as much just because it wasn't one of the sides. It was your initial cast on row. But you can see how nice and even and symmetrical and bold that is. And that's really what you're looking for. So once you get this first square done, of course, it's not going to look like a, like an, a full size square at this point. Let me zoom this up some. It's 
not it's gonna look a little lopsided and that's fine it's just because it's stretch where it's on the loom once you get it off it's going to be a square um at this point there are a few different things you can do you can use your yarn and keep going like you have been do your corner one corner two do this side to the corner corner one corner two and just keep going until you get the blanket as long as you would like for it to be or you can switch collars which let me show you with this one right here and take this out from under it okay so I'll flip this one over with this one at that point I chose to switch collars and so as you see there's not going to be like a bubbled up ridge there but there will be a nice square or rectangle however you do your shape and this is one reason it's pretty important to make sure you know where that corner one is especially if you are sh uh, changing colors that way it it's very even and it uh, matches up so what you want to do is at this point if you're going to change your collars you will cut your yarn you will get your new yarn and you will hold the new yarn and this old yarn together for like your first three pegs at least that will lock it in and then you don't have anything really weird you don't want to do knots if you don't have to um especially with the blanket if you do big knots then you're they're going to be in there and i know with me the knots bother me so you'll just weave it in you want to do just right where you're at that's where you want to change your yarn and then every time you change your yarn you will change it on a corner like when you get to a spot right before you you're getting ready to do your corner one you will change your yarn you don't change your yarn after the corner and you don't change your yarn in the middle of the corner if you're wanting your squares to be even because if i would have done it in the middle of it then there would have been a brown triangle if i would have done it after then it would have went out farther hope that makes sense okay so for this one what i'm actually going to do i'm just going to cast off at this point um just because i'm just going to use this as a like a pot holder so for the cast off we're going to do our super stretchy cast off so i'm going to wrap the yarn around this like three times and cut it And for our super stretchy cast off, let me get this back down where it's easier to see. Okay. Super stretchy cast off. What you do is you wrap your yarn around the working piece three times and cut just so you have enough yarn. You're going to go to your second peg, pull the yarn up. Go back to your first peg and pull the yarn down. You're going to skip a peg, pull the yarn up, go back one and pull it down, which this isn't very long so I'll just work the whole ending with you but that's all you do is you just skip over one, pull it up, go back one and pull it down. Now when you're casting off, you want to make sure you cast off before you do a corner as well. Uh, that way everything will be even. You don't want to get all the way to the end of your blanket and then cast off in the wrong spot. And uh, have that end kind of just a little odd for you. Alright. Go up, go back go down and this super stretchy cast off is really good for smaller items that you want a stretchy ending to now this won't match up exact to what I have on here um, but it will it'll be an even cast off which I'll show you and it's going to be stretchy which with blankets you want them stretchy 
which you can do this one. You could even do the crochet cast off if you wanted to. Okay, so at our last one, we'll go ahead and pull it up through that last one. At this point, we're going to take everything off. And you'll see this is going to look different than the rest of it, but you got like a 10 stitch area that's going to look different. See, that's how the super stretchy cast off looks. And at this point, I can go ahead and take all of these out. Which I do suggest using your stitch counters, your stitch markers, uh, just to help hold those corners because it really does help a lot when, especially when you are uh, changing collars. Okay. And at this point, I do it from the end to this middle piece because then I could take my crochet hook and weave it in and make it a little more even. Which, at this point, all you're going to be doing is weaving in your loose strings, which, if you're doing a full-size blanket, there's going to be plenty of them. Which, what you want to do is you don't want to weave them in on this top side. You want to take and get them through to the back and weave them in. Just so if they start popping out later, they will be popping out on the back side and not the front side of the blanket, more likely. And once you get them, um, oops. I'll stretch it so you can kind of see. There you go. So this is just like an initial square of a 10 stitch blanket. Now at any time, if I ever wanted to pick this up and add to it, I can. I just put these 10 pegs, stitches where I cast off, put them back on the loom, and just start right with my corner one, corner two. There'll be a little bit of a difference right there in that edge, but it's really not gonna be very noticeable at all. I've just made myself a lovely right, pot So there are a couple notes that I have to make and give credit to some people before this video is over. First of all, this pattern is copyrighted by Frankie Brown and I did get permission from her in advance before doing these videos. Um, the only thing that she said is, uh, this is what she wrote, she said, I make no money out of my designs but instead ask people to donate to my chosen charity the Children's Liver Disease Foundation. The link to my fundraising page is justgiving.com slash Frankie Knitted Stuff. Uh, the link is in the description, which is, it's absolutely wonderful that she uh, f does not make money off of her projects, off of her patterns. Instead, she raises money for an awesome cause. Another note, once I get done gabbing, you're going to see a diagram pop up for 60 seconds. That diagram was done by, okay, I'm sorry, I'm probably going to mispronounce your name, Giannis Sharif, I believe. Wonderful person. He actually took the time to make up this diagram that he is just passing out and giving out, sharing online for free to help people really picture how to do the 10 stitch blanket and it's a really really good diagram he did a great job of it so like I said it's going to be posted it's going to be up for 60 seconds now you can um, pause and then just look at it and kind of go over with it I suggest if you're on a device where you can just screenshot just screenshot it and save the file save that image so that you can reference it later because that's something you will probably want to reference it's very 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 helpful Okay, so Frankie and Giannis, thank you guys for all the work that you have both done. Um, this is an amazing pattern. It's absolutely wonderful. And it's so fun. Like, you can see, I just made, like, it's going to be a, a pot holder or something. I'm not really sure what I'm going to do with my little swatch I did to show you guys how to make it. Everybody, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. 
do not forget to please click on the link below and if you can donate just a little bit of money to help out Frankie's cause that she is trying to raise money for. Don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel and any comments or questions, uh, please leave them in the comment section below. Everybody, thank you.